Hello everybody, and is everybody well today? <laughs> oh, I am so delighted to hear that. Oh, and me? Oh yes, still vertical and still above the ground. <laughs> and are you ready to fly Ryanair 186 today? Good. And we've got some wonderful places to go and visit today. I got a message from Agent M again. Of course, it was all coded and naturally. <laughs> Agents always do that, don't they? <laughs> anyway, he said, long flights are boring. He's right about that. So could you fly from Kerry, which is E-I-K-Y, to Dublin, which is E-I-D-W. Hmm. Hmm. Well, of course we can. We can fly anything, anywhere, anytime. So, no problem at all. We will do exactly that. And we will follow an actual Ryanair flight itself. Now, a real Ryanair flight is number 666. Seven eight six six seven eight, or if you put FR six six seven eight in the search box when you're on Flight Aware, it will take you straight to the history of all of those previous flights. We, of course, are still going to be Ryanair one eighty six. I think by now every air traffic controller throughout the world is shaking in their shoes knowing that Ryanair 186 is flying in their air. <laughs> now the airport of uh, Kerry is a county airport and it's 15 miles equidistant between Trelly and Killarney. Of course County Kerry. And we're going to go to Dublin. Now Dublin is really wonderful scenery there. I don't know if you've ever been to Dublin. If you haven't, you should put it on your bucket list. Now, here's some sites that I managed to gain from uh, off the internet to show you what Dublin's all about. It's a colorful city full of interesting sites. And did you know there are nearly 700 pubs in the city? <laughs> the River Liffey runs through the city and it has beautiful bridges, both old and new. Dublin, of course, is the famous home of the world famous Guinness. And when we get there, there's always a tour around the brewery to fill up the day and fill up the glass. <laughs> and if Guinness isn't your style, then perhaps a little Jameson Irish whiskey will suit. And if you still have some free time, there are some wonderful archaeological museums you can visit. And of course, Dublin is near and dear to my heart because it's also Ireland is the land of saints. And Dublin celebrates them with some magnificent cathedrals and churches. Now, I wasn't able to find any uh, commercial scenery or freeware scenery for that matter for uh, Kerry Airport EIKW so we'll be using the P3D default. But Dublin Airport 
Now that is made by MK Studios. So Dublin EIDW is made by MK Studios. And I found out just recently that MK Studios is a Polish group and there are some really talented people there. So Agent M, are you ready? Then let's go into pre-flight and plan our flight, shall we? Well, here we are in Flight Aware, looking at Ryanair Flight 6678. Here you can see the other designating codes. This particular one arrived over 23 hours ago. Now there is a Ryanair Flight 6678 already in the air, but since it's not arrived and it's, the flight is incomplete, I've gone to the historical one. This one, of course, took off from Kerry, landed at Dublin at Terminal 1. We'll have a look at all of these. Here's the route that it took. Departed, swung around, straight across, and then it looks like it made an approach to come in onto runway 28 on this flight. Let's have a look at the flight cruising altitude. Oh, they were at 21,000 feet. Well, we'll do the same. We'll, we'll fly at 21,000 feet to do exactly the same thing. Right, let's have a look at Windy. Well, here's the current conditions at County Kerry Airport right here. You can here you can see Trelly and Killarney to the south, and there is some pretty strong winds coming down from the north northwest, swinging down across there, and it is minimum VFR. It says here that 27 minutes ago, the wind was 310 degrees at four knots, varying between 220 and 360. So it's all over the place there. Visibility is 10 kilometers, light rain, sky, clouds are scattered at 700 feet, quite low. Broken at 2000 feet and temperature is 15 degrees. And looking at the Terminal Aerodrome Report, the TAF. It's saying wind 300 degrees at eight knots. So pretty much the same. Looking at the runways, now we have the one runway, 08 and 26. If I were to make a guess, I would say that we would also be departing on the same one as the one yesterday which will be this one, runway 26. But I have no idea if that's actually going to be the case. But no matter how it works, it is definitely going to be a crosswind, land, uh, crosswind takeoff because the winds are blowing pretty steady across in this direction. Looking at Dublin, here you can see there's quite a bit of activity with the weather out here. There's some strong winds right over the Irish Sea, so the water will be quite a bit choppy over here. By the way, Hollyhead and Dublin is the ferry route. That's what I usually take when I go to Dublin, is I take the train to Hollyhead and then take the ferry that goes right into Dublin Harbour. Here the visibility is VFR, so not bad on that. It says wind 190 degrees, 5 knots varying, 160 to 220. Visibility 10 kilometers or more, light rain, clouds at 1200 feet, broken 8000. Temperature is a cooler 14 degrees. The terminal aerodrome report is giving us 210 degrees, 10 knots. So if we were to look at the runways, in all likelihood then we will be coming in on this runway right here, runway 28. The other one, I don't think 
is completed yet. This is the new runway that they're building. And in any event, I don't think MK Studios would have only the one. So I would suspect this runway is the one that we will be coming in on. All right, let's go into Simbrief. And we are, of course, the famous Ryanair 186. And we're departing from EIKY. And we're going to go to EIDW. And there is our alternate. We'll look at that in a moment. Our airframe is this one. And by the way, I went in. This particular aircraft is a real aircraft. So I went and researched everything I could about this particular aircraft with this registration. Then I went into Simbrief into the airframes and I put all the information in there directly from the real airplane. And that's how this airframe comes up like this. There's the registration. Cruise Profile 6, of course, is standard for Ryanair. Schedule flight time, one hour, five minutes. It's calling for departure runway 26 and an arrival runway of 34. I'm going to change that to 28 left and put that in. And the reason for that is I don't think that anybody's going to be landing on the other one because I think that one has been closed. We will make, however, the same 210 flight level. And we are, of course, full of passengers. And we still do have one ton of wonderful freight, which, of course, is champagne and caviar. Yes. There, then, is the route. So we'll see how well this works out. This is the standard instrument departure. And then we have three waypoints. And that is going to be the standard approach. Looking down here. Well, this is, uh, there's the route going up, going up to Limerick. And that, by the way, uh, Shannon is where we will actually be using for our alternate should things go pear-shaped. And then the route takes us across for an arrival into Dublin, hopefully on r runway 28 like we're planning. All right, we've got our route there. Let's go to the top and we will save the flight. And we'll generate the flight plan. And looking down here, we've got our route. Origin is Kerry. Going to Dublin, there is Shannon. Should things go pear-shaped, we've got the flight route of 2.10. Airtime is 39 minutes. Block fuel, 5.429. And there's the routing. Dispatcher is saying there are no remarks. Down here, this is our designator. This is Ryanair 186. This F210 is our flight level. And there is the, the route. There is the alternate airport. And here is the information for that airport. With cost index 6, here's the average wind right there that we'll need to put in. We need to know that we have to put in 5,429 kilograms of fuel, almost five and a half metric tons there. Reserves 2,666, pretty close to 2.7 metric tons. Trip and taxis, to just a little over two tons. No tankering recommended. And here is the the actual route, and I will put this in the description box 
below this video. Here's the wind information for the route. Looking here at the basic information here, you can see the general wind direction and speed and also the temperature. You can see the temperatures minus 25, minus 22 at this point. We're going to need to know flight level 200 or 20,000 feet, flight level 150 or 15,000 feet, and flight level 100 or 10,000 feet. Here's the wind information for our route today. As you can see, we have some pretty good tailwinds taking us all the way into Dublin. Now, this, of course, is for flight level 240, which is 3,000 feet above us. But if I looked at this one for flight level 180, which is 3,000 feet below us, you can see it is still basically tailwinds all the way in. Here is our vertical profile, starting out here at Kerry, climbing up to the top of Climb. Here you can see the winds are going to be tailwinds, top of descent, all the way in to EIDW, which is Dublin. This is the tropopause, and it's looking fairly stable uh, right there at that altitude, but we're not going to be anywhere near that today, so we'll be just at this point. All right. Let's go into Navigraph Charts. Click on Flights, click New Flights from SimBrief, and we'll bring in the one that we just made. Let's open up the Charts list for our originating point and bring this in, and I'll pin that to the bottom. It looks like we'll be, we'll be using Runway 26, so here is the apron right here. Now, there are several parking spots, as you can see on this. But with the default P3D scenery, all we have is number one. So we will be starting out at number one uh, parking area in Kerry. And it looks like we have to go here and do a long backtrack to get to the end of the runway to make our takeoff, which is 6,562 feet. So we will want to make the full use of the whole runway. The departure chart as you can see here, it comes out and we'll be taking this route going up towards Shannon for our departure. So I'm going to pin that. And that, of course, is the Kerr 3B. Looking at our destination, open up the charts list. We'll need the airport and the stands east. Now, looking at the airport, this is showing two runways. So obviously they are now in use and also 3-4 is, uh, looks like it's also in use. But I'm not sure that MK Studios actually has the new runways in them yet. So we may be still limited to the runway 28 left. And we'll pin that. As for parking stands, Pier 1. This, this is for Ryanair. All Ryanair aircraft come in and depart from this particular stand over here. So we'll be anywhere probably 
around 121, 122, wherever there's a, an empty space, we'll be parking there when we arrive. The procedure for landing is going into Oscar, coming over here, and it says that Oscar will be below 16,000 feet. Go up here, and this particular point, we now have a maximum speed of 220 knots, and we will need to be about 7,000 feet at that point. Swinging around, coming down to here where we'll be slightly above 3,000 feet or at 3,000 feet to make our approach right in to the runway there. Right, I'll pin that. Looking at the approach, and 28 left will be category 3 ILS runway and bring that in. Let's bring up the overlay and look at that. Now here you can see this is the initial approach fix right here and max 220 will be probably more about 200 knots at this point and 3,000 feet. When we get to the intermediate fix then it's definitely 3,000 feet, max is 210 or 220 knots. And then we come straight down 278 degrees to come in to land. We'll need to know the ILS frequency right here, 111.35. And We'll also be putting this in, this is the, another VOR, because if we have to do a missed approach, then we come around and come in and we'll need to go to this one. So we'll put this 114.9 into our second navigation. Looking at the chart, ATIS is 124.53. Here are all the approaches. The tower is 118.6. The, this is, the airport elevation is 243 feet. Final course, 278. And it's saying, let's have a look for the, for category three, the decision height is 50 feet. So we'll put in 50 feet for our decision height. And coming in onto final. So right from there, goes to that point and then straight down to land. Hopefully without any mishap. All right, we've got our route. Get all of this cleaned up. All right, Agent M, are you ready? Then let's go into the cockpit and get ourselves started. There you are, Agent M. Do come on in and take your seat. Remember, buckle up. Now, I'll tell you where we're at. We are here at Kerry, County Kerry Airport and everything is in autumnal colors. Everything is beautiful because we are well into autumn now. And we are at parking stand number one because this is the P3D default scenery. And there's not, uh, there's only this one stand to worry about. And when we do our pushback, our tail will go to the right and our nose will go to the left in order to get to the runway. So it's a very simple straightforward procedure. Right. I've got everything set. I've got all the fuel is on board and so we're all set. All right now to get ourselves started we 
Turn on the battery, we make sure that we have enough volts. Turn on the fuel pumps and then let's get the APU going here. Now I'm going to show you what happens with the APU. The low oil pressure light has come on. This by the way is the switch for turning it on and off right here. And now the gas temperature is rising very nicely. This is the engine that's in the tail of the aircraft. And it'll go up to a peak and then it will start to descend. This of course is equipment that's made by open cockpits. And how realistic can you get? Look at that, even all the gauges work, everything works on this. So kudos to them for the wonderful job that they've done. Now I'm looking, ah, there it is. I've got the blue light saying that I have voltage. And now up here I have 115 volts. So I'm now able to do lots of things. I can get everything started now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the left and the right IRS, which is our GPS system. I'm going to turn on the galley. You never know. They may just make us a cup of tea. Turn on the emergency exit lights. No smoking. Fasten seatbelt signs. And over here, I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat. I'll leave the probes off for the moment. Now I'm going to turn on the electrical hydraulic pumps. These lights that you can see here, that's the forward service hatch, that means the cabin door is open. And equipment, those are the air stairs, which means everybody climbs into the aircraft using those stairs. And yes, I can see our self-loading cargo already getting ready. So over here, I'm now going to turn on the APU bleed, the recirculating fans, isolation valve and the packs. And there it is. There's heat now going through into the main cabin to warm everything up because it is a cold day here. It is only 16 degrees outside. That's 61 Fahrenheit. And that's the same temperature where I am, right here in South Yorkshire. But this, of course, is Ireland, the western part, the southwestern part of Ireland. And now I'm going to turn on the steady light. So that is all now ready and set for programming the FMC. Right here we are, we're looking now at the first screen and it's showing that the air rack <coughs> is currently in its current and the program is not showing any errors. So position and we are at EIKY, so EI and Kilo Yankee. And we're at number one. So we'll put number one in there and it comes right up with that. So I'm going to put that into the temporary and then now make it active. Go into the root again, E-I-K-Y. And we're going to go to E-I-D-W. And we are, of course, Ryanair Flight 186, so R-Y-R 186. And we'll go to the next page, and we'll put in the waypoints that we need. And our route, first of all, is going to go to CARE, so K-E-R, K-E-R. And it'll be the first one on top. Then we go to SHA, S-H-A, S-H-A, again, Shannon at the top, and then Osgar, O-S-G-A-R. And then we activate that, execute, easy peasy. Now we go into the, to 
prefix and we want to put in the EIDW, EIDW for our destination and then we need a 4 mile circle, we need a 10 mile circle and a 30 mile circle around our destination and that way everything comes up very nicely. Go to descent, go to forecast, transition level is set by ATC but we do need to put in the information for these three altitudes and which are flight level 200, 150 and 100 or 20,000, 15,000 and 10,000 feet. Q&H at our destination is 1015, 1015, put that in, and then the information for the speed and direction is 232 at 48, so 232 at 48, then for 150 it is 241 at 36, 241 at 36, and at 10,000 feet it is 258 at 18, 258 at 18, and execute that. Now we go to departures and arrivals, and here's where we, now we need to tune in to ATIS to see what the ATIS report is. It's of interest to know that the Active Sky program, which I'm also running out there with some pretty detailed cloud, is showing that the runway here in use is 26 and the runway at our destination is 28. So that's what we're being given on Active Sky. Let's see if the local uh, weather forecast will pick that up. So Tune carry is 118.25. 118.25. Carry airport information Golf 1102 Zulu wind 319 at Niner visibility greater than 20 miles. Sky condition few clouds at 1000 2500 scattered temperature 15 dew point altimeter 141016. Landing and departing runway 26 VFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact you have. Golf. Right, we have Golf and it says runway 26 is in operation and that the local altimeter is 1016 QNH. So 1016. Put that in. Okay, now that we know we're running on number 26, we'll put in 26 over there, and then of course we're going to need to put in the Kerr 3B, which is our departure sim, and put that in right there. Now we go back to departure and arrivals, go to arrivals, and we are coming in on runway ILS runway 28 left and we're coming in on the Oscar 3x approach there it is there's the Oscar 3x and we'll just take that as it is and execute that now we go to legs and here's where we go through our route to check it out and make sure everything is running good I'm going to switch this now to plan right over there so that we can follow it on this and now I'm just going to go through each of the steps to see if there are any problems. So coming out, there's our departure, there's Shah, there's Oscar, Durham, Rekkepor, Avak, Sorin, swinging around and then we come right in to join that up and that brings it up into Latmo and then right on to the final approach for runway 28. Easy peasy. Okay, now I'm going to switch back to map. I'm going to put the weather on my side, double click this for data, 
I'm going to also increase the range to 20. Over here, I'm going to put terrain on your side, Agent M, and double click on data. Now I'm going to turn on TCAS so that we can be seen by other aircraft, and then turn on the RTO in preparation. So everything is looking good so far. Now let's finish off the the route and perform the initialization. Our cruise altitude is 210. Our fuel is 5,429 which we've got loaded in and we're going to use reserves of 2,666 plus the trip and taxi which is 2,067 that is 4,733 or 4.7. So I'll put 4.7 into the plan. Reserves, as we said, was 2.7. 2.7 for reserves. Cost index is 6. Cruise wind is 235 at 37. 235 at 37. Transition altitude is 5,000 feet. Double click the zero fuel weight and it calculates everything. Execute that. N1 limit. We'll take the 16. We're not going to do any D rates or bumps or anything like that. Go straight to the, that and we'll use flaps 10. Double click this and it gives us the center of gravity and the value on the trim wheel. One click on each of these gives us the value of V1, rotate, and takeoff speed of 145. Since we'll be departing on 26, that's going to be a course of 255 on the course setting. So I'll put 255 in here. I'll do yours too if that's okay. All right, thank you. To 255 and we'll be going to 21,000 eventually. I'm going to put 21,000 feet in this which of course is our cruising altitude for onboard pressure and the elevation at our destination is 243 feet so in increments of 50 that would make that 250 so 250 for our landing altitude so that when we open the doors your ears don't pop okay so far so good and then 145 on this for the muck okay now let's see how that works out flight director on flight director on VNAV LNAV and we have green lights on both on the throttle VOR1, VOR2, 1 and 2 on yours VOR1 is set to the frequency of the localizer for runway 28 and VOR2 is set to the frequency of the VOR at Dublin and that way we will get the information for navigation on, from both of those the, uh, both of those nav aids. All right. Now I'm going to turn on the flight and um, flight continuity came off. Your damper is up here. Scanning across the board, everything looks good. Everybody's on, so we'll bring up the stairs. That's the electrical motor bringing up the stairs. It nicely folds them. Look at how neatly that is done. And the hatch is closed, so everything is set. The lights have gone out up here, so we're all good on that. And okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to request our IFR clearance and 
taxi and get a clearance to the active runway, so. Kerry Ground, Ryanair 186IFR2 Dublin International, ready to copy. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Oscar Sierra Golf Alpha Romeo Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain 12000 departure frequency as 127.5 squat 1574 Ryanair 186 cleared to Oscar Sierra Golf Alpha Romeo Airport as file fly runway heading climb and maintain 12000 departure on 127.5 squat 1574 Ryanair 186 Redback is correct Contact ground on 121.6 when ready to taxi. Alright. Well, we're ready to taxi, so let's get our clearance. Kerry ground, Ryanair 186 with hotel ready to taxi, IFR. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short of runway 26 using taxiway Alpha runway 8. Contact tower on 123.325 when ready. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 26 using taxiway Alpha runway 8 Ryanair 186. Alright, we have been given our clearance, so let's do the checklist. Fuel is correct, windows all locked, seatbelt signs are on, door lights are out, MCP programmed and is correct, takeoff thrust bugs are all set, CDU pre flight is complete, rudder air alarm trim is set. Taxi aircraft briefing, as we said, we're going to have our tail go to the right and our nose to the left. Now I'm going to put the anti-collision light on and we are now ready to ask the nice people on the ground to give us a pushback. I've got the Navigrap charts now set and, right, and you can see them at the bottom. So let me just enlarge this so you can see where we are and where we've got to go. You can see where we are on the west apron and we're going to go down that alpha taxiway to get to the runway and then we have to go all the way down the runway until we get to the end, do ourselves a, a little U-turn there and then we can take off. All right. so. Get myself ready here. We are all good to go. You're all settled in. Seatbelt fastened. Good. In that case, then, let's ask the people to give us a pushback. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our right. Copy that. Ready to push. Tail to the right. Parking brake release, please. Parking brake is released. Now I'm going to turn off the heat blowers because we need the air Brakes to go released. to the engines. Which engine would you like to start today? Number one or number two? You, either one, left or right. You'd like to start the air, air, left air? All right, we'll start left engine. So I'm going to Brakes turn lead. this to the generator one. And now I'm going to turn on the start so the start valve has opened here you can see the n2 is climbing very nicely when this gets to 24 i'll introduce the fuel so that we can start to get a good ignition as coming up 24 good bring in the fuel now i'm looking for the engine gas temperature to increase oh and there it is very good now I'm looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. And there it is. There, everything is coming up very nicely. Yes, look at that. Starting very, very good. Very good. All right, now we've got the ignition on that. I'm going now, got 115 volts. So now I'm switching to generator 2, the start valve has opened, and 2 is climbing very nicely. Push back complete, parking brake set. Parking brake is set. When this gets brake to 24, set. I'll bring in the fuel. There it is, fuel is now introduced. Now looking for the engine gas temperature to rise. The steering pin is pulled, watch for the slip release pads on your right after flight. Thank you gentlemen.
They are such nice people on the ground, aren't they? Okay. Now, the low oil pressure light has gone out and engines are ignited good. And now I'm looking for 115 volts to appear up here. There we are. When this red tick has gone off, it means that both engines and generators are stable. So now I'm switching to the main engines for my power. And I'm now going to turn on the heat again and the heat blowers, turn off the APU bleed and turn off the APU. All right, we're doing very well. Everything's looking good. So after start, generators are on. And let's go to flaps 10. So generators are on. Probe heat is now going on left and right. Anti-ice not required. Isolation valves are good. Engine start levers idle, detent. Flight door locked and checked. Recall is checked. Flight controls checked. Flaps we have 10 and green light. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake RTO. Speed brake lever down detent. Ground equipment is clear. Yep, all clear. So now we are ready to go out over there, turn left and go down the runway to get ourselves in position. So, brake is now off. You're all set to go. Okay. Attendance, we're getting ready to move. Everything looks good. So, taxi lights are now on. And here we go then. Let's get a little boost to get ourselves unstuck. And the windsock is definitely showing a crosswind takeoff. My goodness. As soon as we get to the whole short line, we're going to have to get our clearance for takeoff because we're going to be taking up the active runway. So let me tune into the tower and request takeoff clearance. Henry Tower. Ready to go, runway 26 IFR2, Oscar Sierra Pulse, Alpha Romeo. Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff, runway 26. Cleared for takeoff, runway 26, Ryanair 186. Right, we are cleared, so I'm now going to turn the, all the lights on, make sure that everything is good. We're going to go out here and turn left and go all the way down to the end of the runway. All 6,562 feet of it. Beautiful colors in all of the trees. Look at all of this. Listen, this is beautiful scenery today. Nature at its best. Autumn may be changeable and getting cold but you know what it has a lot of beauty to the eye just absolutely delightful right when we depart we'll be climbing up and making a turn in order to <coughs> make our departure. I've never been in or out of Kerry Airport. I have Dublin, of course, but 
never been in or out of Perry Airport. So this is uh, a first time for me. And it looks like the turnaround is to the left. So we'll turn in left, swing around, and then get ourselves pointed in the right direction there. Beautiful. Right now I need to slow up a little bit here so we're not going too so fast to make our turn. They don't give us an awful lot of room here to make that turn so we'll have to use every little bit of it. going to use the left engine to help boost my turn. And there you can see the windsock is definitely showing a crosswind. the takeoff briefing is done, engine bleeds are on, check, engine start switches continuous on, and now I'm going to turn the position light on to strobe, and starting the clock. Are you ready? Okay, then let's give ourselves some power. Power is going to N2. We have good power and toga button push and full power. Well, we certainly have crosswind. V1, rotate. Rotate. V2. And we are airborne. Positive rate. Let's put the gear up. Ryanair 186 contact Shannon Center on 127.5. Going 2127 points on Ryanair 186. Alright, going to flaps 5. And going to autopilot. And here's where we start to make our turn. And I'll do some tourist stuff. Let you see what the countryside looks like from here. Oh, we're climbing through the first layer of cloud. We knew that was low. can see the estuaries and the Atlantic Ocean belong beyond it. All right, now we're making our turn. There's the ground below. All right, 
straps are up, landing gear is up, everything is looking good. Right, releasing the crew to go to work. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see our route. We're making that big teardrop departure. Really, really nice. We are 253 knots. because that's the departure procedure here. But once we get over the top of Kerr, we'll be able to speed up and climb to our altitude. Okay. I'm already showing the Dublin VOR that is now pointing over here. See if I can show you that up close. See, there's the arrow pointing to the Dublin VOR, which is on my navigation radio number two. And there's the frequency for the navigation on run for navigation two. We're not yet within range of the localizer, so it's not showing yet. But we are certainly seeing the one to go to Dublin, right there. Now we're starting to climb. Alright, everything is looking good. Going on to standard and 1015 is the QH at Dublin. Okay. Everything is looking good. Yep, it is. So I'm going to turn off the lights. Turn off the fasten seatbelt sign and now you know what comes next, don't you? That's right. We serve complimentary champagne and caviar. Only today we also loaded up a couple of pallet loads of Guinness. So you've got a choice, champagne and or Guinness or both. You can have both, whatever you like. So go ahead into the back, make sure that you get a good meal and plenty to drink, and I'll give you a shout as soon as we're on our uh, downwind for landing at Dublin, okay? See you in a little bit.
there you are, Agent Ten. Come on back in. Did you get enough to drink and to eat? Oh, good. I hope you had plenty to drink because look at the weather. It is socked in. And it is IFR conditions for landing at Dublin. So we are making an IFR approach and landing onto runway 28 at Dublin International Airport. Are you ready for that? Ah, good. I'm glad you are. I'm not sure about me. <laughs> well, let me show you what the weather is looking like on the weather radar. Here you can see there's a lot of weather cells sweeping around. But we are on track. Here we are. We're coming in. We are now downwind for landing on runway 28 over here. You can see that we are 19... 0.9 DME miles from the Dublin VOR and we are 15.2 DME miles on the localizer. So we'll be going around there and then swinging down to intercept final to come on there. But look at all these weather cells around us. There's a lot of very unsettled weather and rain around there. So we're in for a very wet landing. We still have a tailwind at the minute until we make our turn of course and our ground speed was 380 at the, at the max so we did very very well on the uh, using a tailwind. Not bad eh? And you can see all of the cloud all around us here, so we are definitely in uh, for some interesting weather. Now, with that much cloud, there will be a lot of unstable air. Anyway, the fast and seatbelt signs are now on, and I'm turning on the main lights and attendants pick up all the glasses before we break them hey <laughs> all right now then I'm just going to reduce my level I've got the descent profile set on your screen there right I'm going to go to flaps one so that we can slow up a little bit here. We need to decelerate, it says. That's what's coming up on the on the screen. I've now just made sure that you can see our route and our approach for landing on the screen. So I'll just make that a little bit uh, larger. So we've got a couple of little legs in and it's asking for a little drag. Okay, looking all right. I've got 278 degrees set on both of our uh, flight directors for a final course. We're coming down to 2,500 feet and I'm going to now make our intermediate heading change. We'll be making a left turn just shortly. When we make our turn and get to the, uh, what is that, the civil, the Sydney waypoint, 
will go to flaps five at that point. Well, there's going to be plenty of cloud. I don't know how much visibility we're going to actually have of the approach, but we'll have to see. Now the next course change is 312, so I'm going to put 312 in here so it's ready. And that will be quite a, a little bit of a turn at Sydney. So as soon as we've made the turn, then I'll go on to flaps 5. I hope they treated you well back there, give you large glasses. Did you have some Guinness as well? Oh, you did? Oh, good. I'm so glad to hear that. Since we were coming into Dublin, we had to load up with Guinness, you know. And you can hear that it is very busy on the radio. There's a lot of traffic in the area. Let's hope we don't run into any of it. <laughs> All right, we should start making our turn in just a moment. Here we go, making our turn. And we're coming on to a course of 312. Oh, 309 actually, according to that. There we go. 309. Double Tower, World Travel 822, ready for IFR departure, runway 28. World Travel 822. As soon as we level out, I'll go to flaps 5. Clear for takeoff, runway 28, World Travel 8227. Alright. Going to flat five. We're now on our base leg to intercept the final. With all this traffic, I'm not sure how we're going to fare with uh, clearances, so we're just going to go in and land best we can. There's not an awful lot of visibility, as you can see. Lots of cloud here. Binu is the next waypoint. I'm now going on to Q and H, which is 1015. Our minimums are set for 50 feet. When we're in this cloud, it could get a little bumpy. So, hang on to your uh, cup. Binu is our initial approach fix. 
and we are to be 3,000 feet about and then LAPMO we are to be at 3,000 feet and that's when the speed starts to be controlled well we are in, in IFR conditions right now but we've slowed up so we're not going to experience too much bump I hope Now when we turn on to final, I'll be going on to flaps 10 and then we'll be coming down the glide slope hopefully at that point. I don't know if we're going to get to see the uh, runway but one we, once we do see the runway and we're committed to land then I'll try to take over at that point. This is where being an IFR rated pilot works out, you know. The instruments are everything when you can't see anything outside. Oh, got a little clear in there. And there is rain. Yes, indeed, there is rain. And I think I can see the airport, sort of. Not the easiest to see. And I believe that is the runway at the left. Now we're coming up on our minimums, uh, not minimums, the minimum descent. Twenty-five hundred feet is the the point, and we're coming up on three thousand feet. Now we're turning on to final. We're coming on to final, so I'm going to... Right, I've got the localizer on. I'm going to 278 on this. And the runway is ahead, sort of, through the cloud and the rain. I'm going to go full lights engines continuous start levers okay speed brake lever landing gear is not down yet and we have crosswind the wind is coming from over there so we are crabbed into the wind which means I'm gonna have a hard time seeing that runway all right, going to collapse 10. And locking onto the look onto the glide slope and we're on the glide slope. We have acquired the glide slope. Everything is looking good. Crew secure for landing. And now, going flaps down and gear down. I have the runway in sight. We're descending. There's a lot of rain. And there's a lot of crosswind. Okay, shall I do it? What do you think? Are you game? Are you <laughs> Do you trust me? Do you trust me? <laughs> okay. Well, we're losing the visibility again, so 
Let's go for a little bit longer before we turn, take over. All right, let's see now. We're coming straight down the glide slope. Everything is looking good. I have control. <laughs> for better or for worse. I can see the runway lights. Well, we certainly do have IFR weather and approach this time. Ooh. I've lost the runway, but I'm still 1, on course. We're not at minimums yet. Ah, I have the runway in sight. There it is. We do have a vicious cross window. Woo! It is crosswind. Four hundred. Three hundred. Gotta get lined up here. Two hundred. Approaching minimums. One hundred. And we do have bumps. Minimums. 40, 30, 20, 10. And we have reverse thrusters are on. We're going to turn off on this. Pacifica 7345, clear for takeoff, runway 10. And to the runway, the whole shoreline. Pacifica 7345. Okay, we'll, we'll hold at this point and start the cleanup. All right, and lights are off. Okay, and... So, crew is released to go to work. And we'll turn off all of these. Okay, and... Flaps are coming up. Okay, so good. Right, now let's switch to the... Well, we need to go down Sierra, which is this one, until we intercept the Whiskey 2, and that will take us past the West Apron cross over the runway oh look at the visibility we are it's almost a pea super here and then we can make our way to the terminal where Ryanair is okay so let's see if we can make it so give a little Pacific power. Seven three four five contact Dublin departure on one one nine point five five. Going to one one nine point five five Pacifica seven. This three, is five. really tricky. Well, 
let's hope that we've got some better visibility from here on out. Oh, there's a lot of weather cells around the area. This is really ha, inclement weather. Well, this you'll need an umbrella if you're going to go touring around Dublin City today. But we're on the Sierra taxiway and although the visibility is on and off, there's a lot of water on the ground, a lot of water. My frame rate is 15.16, that's, and remember, I'm using 4K, all the stops are pulled out, but I also have active sky and that does have a frame impact as well so um, very very interesting weather today right we need the whiskey too which I think is the second one up here but we were certainly blown about on that approach, it was crosswinds coming in. Wow. Crosswinds and gust, gusting. All right, coming up to Whiskey 2 here. And there we go. There's Whiskey 2. This is, of course, made by MK Studios. They're the ones who designed this. And what a magnificent job they did as well. Now here's an aircraft pulling out in front. I don't know if we're going to be playing chicken with them or if it's going to go, go on, get out of the way, buzz off. Oh, the weather has suddenly changed. All right, since it's sitting there, I can't go around it. I'm going to have to do this. And going around it. How about that? Yep, yeah, it did. It wanted to come down the taxiway that I was on. How dare it? That's that one over there. Well, we'll take the Whiskey 3. There are a few kamikazes around, but we'll have to do the best we can with that. This is the Whiskey 3 and the runway is ahead. <coughs> but at least it stopped raining. Right, make sure that nothing's coming. And then we'll go straight across and try to find an empty spot. How about that? Looks good. We're all right. So here's the pop of one and Use minimum power, it says. Okay. Well, if we go any slower, somebody's going to have to push us. Here's the link five. Okay. This is where all of the. Tower. Road travel four five nine five is eight miles. 
This is where all Ryanair parks. So we're going to come into here and find ourselves an empty spot. Oh, there may be one right here. What's this one? This is one two one. All right, we'll we'll take this one. Go lining up. And coming to a stop. There we go. Right, break on, clock off. Okay, now engines off, shutting down. Okay, lights are going off. Right, your damper is off. IRS is off. Galley off. Emergency exit lights, fasten seatbelts. Stairs are now going down. Window heat off, probes off. Hydraulic pumps off. And Cass is off. Okay, everybody's off and we're at the proper stand here. My goodness, this is this is really detailed. Alright, let's just make sure. Okay, now fuel off, APU off, battery off, and shutdown is complete. Right, Agent M, I hope that you enjoyed your flight. It was a bit wet on the landing, certainly was that, and uh, the visibility was not good at all. There were gusts and there were cr strong crosswinds, and the rain was blowing, and but now it stopped. So, it looks like it may be a good day for going into Dublin and exploring all of those nearly 700 pubs. Let's think. Now, 700 pubs. Think of a pub crawl and 700 pubs. Hmm, I'm having a hard time getting my head around 700 pubs in a pub crawl. Oh, that, I'm not sure even in my best day I could have handled that, but you never know. Thank you for the suggestion. Thank you for letting me fly this route for you. I did enjoy it a lot, even though the weather was atrocious, but that's okay. It helps to keep the, keep the reflexes going good, okay? And I'll see you on another flight in the future, and everyone else, I'll see you all again on a flight of Ryanair 186 next week. Bye, everybody.